I literally ticked all of the boxes. I was giving my power to my ego. Yeah, rules are there, rules are great, mm. but don't become a slave of the rule. You take me through the, not the full process, right? But from the moment that you realized that you were not authentic and the moment that you said enough. Have the courage to question everything. Wow. How was the perception of the closest friends, the family? And change always has a little bit to do with a part of you dying. The world is just a mirror. So everything that you get triggered by on the outside is what you have not accepted on the inside. Real woman, a woman who is in her femininity, is in her wish, is, is in her wisdom, is in her intuition, is guided by the earth and is channeling through above. You made a deal with the universe. What was it? Natalia, thank you so much for coming to my platform today. So you are a social scientist, doctor of philosophy, international keynote speaker, personal branding strategist, author and two times Amazon bestseller, two books, personal branding, meet LinkedIn and barefaced authenticity. How about you break this down and we start? Who are you? I consider myself a flawsum human being. Oh, okay. What does mean flawsum? Flawsum is a beautiful word that I've learned in the World Wide Web. And it's a mix between full of flaws and nevertheless awesome. Mm. So what's really important to me is that I encourage people to accept their humanness because I have the feeling that a lot of us are blinded by perfectionism. Mm. And I originally come from Germany and I grew up in Germany. And then I think eight years ago, I studied the American culture a lot, especially mm. entrepreneurs. And what I realized was that, of course, I'm generalizing right now and it's never good to generalize, but I'm going to do that in the context to give my best to explain the complex 3D reality to mm -hmm. make it easier. So in my perception, when I looked at American entrepreneurs and I compared them with German entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. the American way of doing business to me felt like, okay, let's experiment, let's fail and let's learn in the process, but get the product out there. So yeah, it's never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. While in Germany, the way how I've been raised and educated was, until you're perfect, you don't do anything. And a lot of people are crippled by that because they do a test and a test and a version one and three and whatever. And they don't get real life experience. Mm -hmm. And that's not only true for entrepreneurship. It's also true for relationships. It's true for your hobby and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I want to do something against perfectionism, although I'm not an against person. I want to do something for flawsomeness, for humanness. Mm. And by going out, creating content and saying, I am flawsome. I accept myself. I'm not perfect. And I do it anyway. Mm. I feel that I can inspire and empower people, give them permission slips mm. if they need some, to go out and try things and do things and learn in the process. Amazing. Well, when was the moment when you had this uh, moment of truth or authenticity with yourself and said, and you said, I want to do things differently from your culture. You are coming from Germany or maybe different cultures. They are into perfection. Mm. And you said, enough. I want to change this concept and I want to do things differently. When was that moment exactly in your life? I do believe it comes in layers mm. or maybe there was a first let's say, round of this, when I moved from Germany to Alain mm. and I worked for the Abu Dhabi Education Council. It was a project, a project collaboration between, again, the government of the UAE plus a German agency. And in that project, I, for the first time in my life, worked with so many people from all over this planet, mm. from all over the world. And I realized that People think differently. People are totally different the way how we mm. think, speak, act, the way how we think about politics, religion, careers and everything. And the project was a great learning experience because I realized the way how we Germans, quote unquote, mm. reacted was not flexible. It was 
too perfect and that's the reason why many things would not move as fast as they could so i learned so much from people who came from syria from egypt from lebanon from spain from italy mm. people who who looked at the system or the way how we work in a different way in the sense that yeah rules are there rules are great mm. but don't become a slave of the rule beautiful that was absolutely really life-changing for me. Okay, amazing. So you started your career as expert in branding, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I mean, my second career, okay. I started out as a library assistant. Okay. I did that for three and a half years. Then I moved to Dubai and I was a marketing manager mm -hmm. or marketing PR manager for two and a half years. Then I went on a sabbatical mm -hmm. and after the sabbatical, I was a freelancer. And this is where I literally failed myself up to becoming a LinkedIn unicorn mm. corn and personal branding strategist. Okay. Tell me what about, about the um, unicorn LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. what was about? What was it about? I started with helping people on Instagram and I realized pretty quickly that no, let me start that sentence again. I realized during my first sabbatical mm. that I love to write and people told me that I'm good with my words and it inspired them. So I thought, okay, cool. I started a blog, mm. the Think Natalia blog, and I learned pretty quickly that a blog needs traffic. And I thought, what is this traffic thing? Mm. Oh, it means a lot of people need to visit the page. How do you get people there? Either through ads, which I was not willing to invest in, or through social media. Great. So I asked all of my friends and they said, you know, use Instagram. I used Instagram. I used Facebook. And I realized pretty quickly that people gave me comments on how I look like, but they wouldn't read my caption. So I thought, mm. what do I do? Back then, I tried Twitter and I was terrified because it felt very aggressive and it mm. felt very raw. Mm -hmm. So I thought, OK, Twitter, it's not. Then there was YouTube, but I was so scared to stand in front of a camera. I couldn't speak in full sentences in front of the camera. So wow. I said, that's not happening. Okay. So the only thing sort of, or the only thing left was LinkedIn. So I decided to, to use LinkedIn and I used all of my knowledge that I've gained from local lifestyle entrepreneurs and bloggers and photographers, and makeup mm. artists. And I used that on LinkedIn and LinkedIn back then, which is don't ask me, I think something like seven or eight years ago was very conservative mm -hmm. and it was very boring. And I decided to do what Picasso supposedly once said, learn the rules like a pro to break them like an artist. Love it. So I studied it and then I hacked the system. And one of my posts went viral. I think it had something Oh, 18,000 likes or whatever back then, which was huge. Yeah. And my followers grew from 3,000 to 18,000. And then within less than half a year, another post went viral, which I think had around 62,000 likes. And my followers grew to 30,000. Wow. And this was literally the birthday of the LinkedIn unicorn. And I decided to drop Instagram and just focus on teaching people how to use LinkedIn to build a thought leadership brand, to create content from the heart, to build a network, to get free PR and to spread their message. OK, yeah. so what was unique about your branding strategy? It was all about authenticity mm. although back then i must confess my perception or my limited wisdom or knowledge of what authenticity mm. was um, kind of had a negative impact on it so for me authenticity back then was all about being professional and cracking a few jokes mm. yeah. giving my best to be easygoing mm. whatever and it did the magic but i realized last year during my second sabbatical that I, for 30 years, was suppressing my emotions and I never had the courage to feel everything fully. And it doesn't matter if it is grief or hate or rage or anger or disappointment or if it is joy, bliss, ecstasy. And I just learned, but last year, I mm. learned how to deal with my emotions and how to be a real human being. So now I am authentic. Gosh. So it took you, as you said, 30 years of experience or journey to realize that you were not authentic somehow? 
Mm. This is super powerful, actually, right? Yeah, powerful, because yeah. I suppressed my own power, life force. Oh. It was gone. So to whom you were giving your power then? I was giving my power to my ego. Hmm. My ego is there to protect me. I like my ego, but it is sometimes too rational. It's stuck mm. in the head. It's driven by fear. It is connected to being a good girl or a people pleaser or making my parents proud or on oh, this society, you shouldn't do this. Wow, and yeah. what can you do as a woman? What can you do as a doctor of philosophy? What about a LinkedIn unicorn? It tells me all of the stories of how I should be or shouldn't be in order to be liked and in order to be famous yeah. and whatnot. Mm. So dropping all of that and I always joke that I have beautiful conversations with my ego every day and I say, yo, ego, what's up? It's beautiful. Hey. It's, it's a kind of meditation, visualization mm. exercise. And we make sure that we are friends. And if we're not friends, then at least we have frenemies, friends and enemies at the same time. It's conflictual, right? It is. And I think to a certain degree, it always will be. But I don't think that the ego is the enemy, as a lot of people think. Mm. If we, if the ego wouldn't have a purpose, I do believe that the universe, God, Allah, wouldn't mm. gift us with mm. the, the ego. So it's more about how can I have a mature conversation? How can I find a fair compromise so that my soul is happy and my ego is happy? How can these two dance together? And I feel that this is a lifelong journey and it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's true. So I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> Yalla, bring it on. <laughs> so take me through the, not the full process, right? But from the moment that you re realized that you were not authentic and the moment that you said enough, I want to have a new blueprint of my life, a new version of my life. So, and how you managed to get rid of this society frame mm. that you should be like this, that you should be like that. Women should be like this. Women should behave like this. What was the internal fights. Mm. To be radically honest, I had that twice because mm. I went through two sabbaticals. So I give my best to start with the first one and then let's see if we dip into the second one or not. <laughs> the first one was at the age of 29, you know, the big 30 was on the horizon. Yeah. And I had an idea of how I want to look like and feel like and be like when I'm 30. Mm. And I looked at my life and I compared it to that vision and these were two different stories. So oh. I realized, ooh, hmm, we need to do something. Now, on top of that, I also had a little bit of issues with my PhD thesis. So I needed a new supervisor and I had felt that in my job, I did everything that I wanted to do and I've really achieved a lot of things. I mean, mm. I had the company that I worked with to be on the cover of leading magazines, we won excellence awards. I made sure that we got, like in this industry, everybody knew us. Mm. And still I wouldn't feel successful. And I was living in Dubai and I had beautiful friends and we wow. were partying and I had the handbags that I wanted, I had the shoes that I wanted. So I did everything, Butter. I did mm. everything that society told me or magazines told me or social media told me that I have to do in order to be happy and wow. to be successful. I literally ticked all of the boxes private-wise, career-wise, academically, and still there was this huge feeling of emptiness. Yeah. I felt sad. I felt, oh, is this everything? There needs to be more. Mm. And I was angry and I was confused and I had saved up enough money so that I could live for quite some time. So this is when I gifted myself with my first sabbatical. And during mm. a sabbatical, I was focusing on my PhD thesis and on really figuring out what on earth am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And during that time, I stumbled over this thing called, wait for it, meditation. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. It was crazy. <laughs> and I heard about things like success mindset and, mm. and NLP and programming. And I read, I don't know how many books and I studied all mm. of these success stories from American entrepreneurs mm. and in that process really every day gifted myself with a lot of time to have the courage to question everything wow. no matter how painful it was no matter mm. how scary it was mm. because 
there was this, I call it baby flame in me. Yeah. Like very deep, deep, deep down inside, somewhere around my heart, mm. there was a blue baby flame. Mm. And that bla baby flame was whispering. So you really needed to be quiet to listen to it. And it said, everything is going to be okay. Make or take that jump, Natalia. Wow. And I jumped. This is really amazing. This is really amazing. How was the perception of the closest friends, the family, the partner, society? How was the perception of the new you at that time? Mm. And how, how was the impact on your emotion level? So mm. take me through this process. Again. So quite interesting was that back then I was so low on energy. My mom was actually here in the UAE for a visit. And she told me, she said, either you fix your life or I'm taking you back to Germany. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, ah, I don't want to go back. I mean, I'm a grown up woman, but okay. my mother said something is not aligned. Whatever it is, work mm. on it. Mm. So I thought, okay, cool. I have my mom's blessing, if I want to put it that way. At work, I had a little bit of, hmm, how do I put that? My mentors and my line managers said that's the right thing to do. And... From the day they met me, they said, you have no clue how powerful you are. Mm. They saw something in me that I couldn't see. And they were super incredible mentors. One of the best mentors that I could have ever asked for. Mm. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Oh. Getting a burning <laughs> sensation around my heart. So uh, thank you, Ziggy. Thank you, Uwe. And the, the manager, one level higher, he was a little bit sad because he... Oh, I mean, all of them were sad, right? But he wanted me to stay. I was very happy that I had the strength to, to go and, and let go. In my circle of friends, I told almost everybody that I'm going into hibernation mode or that I'm going into my safe space and my safe cave. And I was terrified because I learned at a certain stage that your vibe attracts your tribe and you mm. are the five people that you spend the most time with. So I told everybody, I'm going through a, I don't know what, crisis, break, sabbatical. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay, you know, and I'm going to come out on the other side. And if you could check in once per week that I'm not lying dead in my flat and cats <laughs> are eating something off me, that would be nice. Although I didn't have cats, but it was the, the fear that my okay. ego was telling me about. So... I chose that my five best friends back then would be Tony Robbins, Robin Sharma, Tim Ferriss, Oprah Winfrey. She chose the best. Right. And uh, <laughs> Tom Billier. So these were my best friends. Until now, none really? of them knows that I exist. But they were, I was feeding my, my inner system based on, on what they were preaching, what they were sharing. Mm. So I literally showered myself with their mindset and... And it was incredible. I felt better. And then when I slowly but surely went out again mm. into meeting new people and attracting new opportunities and also getting back to some of my old friends, because mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. relationships, friends, unfortunately, they they ended, which yeah. is okay. Mm -hmm. I, I realized, ooh, this is next level magic. Mm. It's magic, right? Yeah, it is. It's... It's the stuff that you read in books. It's the stuff that you see on YouTube. And it was happening in my own life. And I was excited and scared at the same time. Mm. So a lot of people actually, most of the people, they, they feel this need at certain time, at certain period of their life when they need to change. Mm. But for some, for some reason, they... They can't take the step forward just because of the fear of the judgment of the society. Mm. Sometimes the fear of the judgment of the partner, of the friends. And they live in this cage, dying in, with their old version of themselves. So what kind of advice that you can give to this kind of people just to ensure them, to tell them, hey, everything is going to be okay, mm -hmm. like the little kid? I'm going to say something that might not sound so nice but it comes from a place of love. It was, I think, Tony Robbins who said something along the lines of people only change when the, give me a second, when the pain of staying the same is bigger than the pain of change. What Ooh. does that mean? Change is pain. 
And you will only change when you consciously, consciously choose to change. That means you must hate your life and your current circumstance so much that you're willing to go through the pain of change. Mm -hmm. And change always has a little bit to do with a part of you dying. It always has to do with an old version of you. You have to release it. You have to let it go, which can be terrifying for the ego. Mm -hmm. And it just is part of this game of life. Mm -hmm. I do believe that life is a school and we come here to learn certain things. Mm -hmm. So... If you, and again, this comes from a place of love, are not willing to change yet, you haven't suffered enough. Go on suffering. That's true. And I hope and I deeply wish that it does not have to be a terrible disease, mm. that it does not have to be a car crash, mm. that it does not have to be the loss of a loved one. Mm. I hope that you wake up and choose change before anything of that happens. This is beautiful. Thank so you. we learn in two ways either the hard way or the soft way exactly right? exactly i'm the kind of person that i learned the hard way same here that was painful it was a suffering but i heard something one day with uh, from uh, um sharma what is his name again robin sharma robin sharma mm -hmm. he said i suggest that suffering is something beautiful i said what mm. how suffering and it's beautiful and then two years later i understood why the suffering is beautiful because the outcome the new version of yourself it's so much beautiful mm. than the old version i said okay now he he has the point mm. right so you were having this fear of putting yourself into the camera Mm -hmm. Then you become international speaker. <laughs> yes, sure. Break it down to me, please. <laughs> Break it down. The universe, God Allah, has an incredible sense of humor. Mm. He is so funny. I love him. So when I started my blog, I realized after some time, wow, that's cool. And a lot of people read my stuff, and especially when I posted it on LinkedIn. So once per year, a friend of mine celebrated his birthday and we wouldn't meet or talk for a year, but then it was his birthday again. I came over and I met this other friend that I only mm. see once per year, butter at his birthday party. Mm. So this friend, he approaches me and says, yo, I've seen your blog. Amazing. Kudos. What's the next step? And I said, I don't know if I knew it, I would already do it. And he said, can I suggest something? And I said, of course. And he said, public speaking. Wow. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm German. My English is terrible. I have a terrible accent. It's not going to happen. And he said, no, 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 no. Come, just come to one meeting. There's mm. this thing called Toastmasters International. Mm. It's a nonprofit organization. It's the biggest nonprofit organization on this planet when it comes to communication and helping you to become a thought leader. And I said, yeah, not sure. Okay. <laughs> but he said, give your best and decide. And I said, okay went home after this party and I uh, asked the universe, give me a sign. If you want me to go to this Toastmasters, give me a sign. Mm -hmm. The next day, I swear to you, this is a true story. I'm on Instagram and there was this gentleman that I followed back then. His name is Lewis House. Mm -hmm. And I think he did a great job in portraying himself on social media. He also started on, on LinkedIn. And there was this interview. And there was a snippet of an interview, maybe 45 seconds. And I was scrolling through my Instagram in the morning and I was like, oh, what is Lewis talking about? And he was talking about the fact that he at a certain stage, relatively early in his career, he didn't know what to do. And then he stumbled over this thing called Toastmasters. And then he started his career over mm. there. And I thought within less than 24 hours, two people tell me about Toastmasters. And I've never heard of that before. Did a sign. Exactly. <laughs> so went to the next Toastmasters meeting. It was beautiful. Now what nobody tells you, so be aware, is that at a Toastmasters meeting, towards the end, they have something, or that's how it used to be. I don't know if it's now. 
they had something which was called table topics. Mm. So they will ask you to come to the stage, and I think we were around 30 people, and they tell you a topic that you have to talk about for one minute, and you just learn about the topic when you're there on stage. Wow. So I was literally butter. I was walking towards the stage, sweating. Literally, my hands would be wet. Oh I was shivering. I, my voice was trembling, and I stood there literally like this, shivering like a chihuahua in front of everybody. Yeah. And then I heard the topic that I should talk about for one minute, and it was selfies. <laughs> the good okay. thing was, I hate selfies. So I was standing there, paralyzed, shivering, and I again prayed. I said, the universe, please, I don't know what to do. And the first thing that came up was, okay, listen, Either people are going to laugh about me, they're going to ridicule me, mm. and I literally feel as if I want to die. Earth, swallow me alive. Wow. Or I could actually make a fool out of myself and people will laugh with me so I could raise the energy and not take myself too seriously. Mm. And you need to know that I have an inner clown in me. I have a little bit of a comedian. Okay. So I decided to go all in and I was making fun and i was giving a lot of beauty bloggers for mm. being as they are for duck face and selfies and whatnot mm. and within less than 30 seconds the whole room was laughing people were crying tears because oh they didn't God. expect a mm. woman to talk about this topic in that way and they didn't expect i guess that's how i perceive this region to be so expressive mm. with my face some people call me rubber face they say mm. oh, i can do all of these crazy mm. things and i did that and this was the moment where i literally felt as if there was a vortex which was opened mm. and i downloaded the information public speaking it is i will speak on international stages in front of thousands of people i need to do this thing so the same evening i signed i trained for one and a half years every week i would write a speech deliver the speech i would no not every week sorry every two weeks i would write the speech train the speech deliver the speech get feedback and after one and a half years I received an invite from a uh, company here in Dubai. They booked me as a speaker. Wow. They even paid me a lot of money for that back then. <laughs> I think it was my first speech for, oh, if I remember well, it was 7,000 dirham. Okay. And I was super excited. And then I thought, wow. And I panicked because when you speak at Toastmasters, you train your speeches, which are three or five minutes. But they booked me for one and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so what was the, um, the outcome of this uh, international speaking experience at a human level? On a human level, I realized that voice have voice words, the presence of a speaker, especially when he or she has done the work, can literally shift the energy mm. in a whole room. And it gives a lot of people hope and it gives them another perspective of looking at life. Mm. And for me, the thought of making money with just speaking was wild. Mm. It was crazy. Mm. Absolutely enjoyed it. And the amount of wonderful people that I've met over the last years speaking in the US or in Singapore or in Bahrain or Germany, it is fascinating, especially mm. when people follow you online and you have no clue who they are. And then after speech, they approach you and say, hey, Dr. Nat, you know, I've been following your content for such a long time. Mm. Can I take a picture with you? And I say, wow, of course <laughs> you can. So, yeah, it's I think it's beautiful on both levels, on the speaker side, but also on the receiver side. Amazing. What, ma what made you write books? And I see here you are author and two times bestseller for Amazon for personal branding, meet LinkedIn mm -hmm. and Barefaced authenticity. Let's start with the barefaced authenticity. Mm -hmm. What so, made you write it? Last year was my second sabbatical. And the first sabbatical, I just hinted at it, was more about understanding that there is mindset and then there is meditation. And if I would have to put everything that I've learned out of the first sabbatical into one sentence, it would be, you are not your thoughts. Hmm. 
which for me was huge because I always thought I'm crazy or one day they're going to figure out that I'm a psycho or whatever because <laughs> I have I have a very loud mind. Mm. I have an ego who's like commenting all the time, like an inner judge. like, mm. And I was sure that this is me until I understood, no, this is just a voice in my head and I'm more than that. I don't know what I'm at or who I am, but there's something else. So during the second sabbatical, I deep dived and then I understood, I learned what emotions are and I finally felt a lot of feelings that I've never felt before. And I realized on the other side of it, I am not my emotions either. Mm. Wow. So when I'm angry, I'm not anger. When I'm sad, I'm not sadness. So who am I? Maybe a soul in a human body. Mm. Maybe a divine baby flame that mm. is in this vehicle here in 3D reality, which has all of these senses so I can smell and touch and sing and dance and all Careful. of this. And I thought, what do I do with this sabbatical? So what I realized before I went on a sabbatical, I realized I don't want to do this LinkedIn unicorn personal branding thing anymore because it's, I can do better, but I don't know what it is. Mm. So literally, I think for four or five months, I said goodbye to all of my clients. I closed all of my online masterclasses, online courses, webinars. I stopped everything. I made sure that every coachee or mentee, every affiliate partner, all of all of this, everybody felt, okay, I received everything that I paid for, closed it, said, I'm not burning a bridge, but I need a break. And then decided to just focus on my transformation and on writing content. So I'll talk with my community. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go into my cave, but I want to keep in contact with you. Mm. I don't want to disappear for a year and come back. I will give my best to write something from the heart and tell you something about my journey as authentically as I can. Mm. Certain things I will not talk about because I haven't processed them yet. And mm -hmm. when I haven't processed it yet, I find it, no, it, I don't have to. Like, mm. if, if there is certain trauma that I haven't fully felt yet, mm, doesn't feel right. And I don't need to tell everybody everything. Of course. So what I did was I posted every day. And in November last year, I asked my team, you know what? Can you have a look at all of the posts and let me know what are the 25 most successful ones? And okay. they sent me the links and I looked at it and I said, oh, interesting. So I started brainstorming and I could come up with five different categories. And I thought, oh, let me create a book out of that. Wow. And that's what we did. I <laughs> mirrored the questions back to my audience and I said, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your support because... I had moments of such doubt and so much pain and the universe through a follower or through a random contact on LinkedIn would send me emotional support, would mm. send me a message, would send me a prayer, would send me a gift. Literally when I felt as if I'm falling kilometers without a bungee jumping rope, when I was just falling and falling and falling and crying and anger and no 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 what's going on <laughs> you know the universe through one of my followers mm. sent me that and i wanted to give back so i said okay i'm going to write this book about da 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 what questions do you have mm. and i got this mirrored back and i said oh that makes sense so i took that looked at this content again created another overview again asked my community this is the book that i'm going to write what else do you need mm. and then they said i want this 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 okay and then based on that i sat down and the first draft of my book believe it or not was done within 33 days 33 days for a book mm -hmm. which is 200 pages and 200 pages okay any chance to have a little bit of content of the book <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So as you said, it's about barefaced authenticity. And I absolutely love the word barefaced because it means without a mask, without any filter. <gasps> so it's about getting rid of the makeup, getting rid of trying to be something that you're not, getting rid of the facade, getting rid of anything that is not you. And the subtitle is... 25 flawsome stories on the journey to the best self. So mm -hmm. I talk a lot 
about my sabbatical. I talk about the transformation that I went through and I share 25 stories, which were the 25 most successful posts mm. last year. And the post, literally the story is two or three pages. So you mm. can read it in three or four minutes. And I give my best to share something and to have a lesson learned in it. Mm. And every story also has three questions. That means if you want to, it's an invitation, it's not a must. You read the book and at the end you answer 75 questions. Wow, 75. About yourself, about your career, about mm. your relationship to nature, about your relationship to the universe, about friendship, about femininity, about so many things. And I already got beautiful feedback back from people mm. who said that I read your book and I quit my job. I read your book and I started to see a therapist. I read your book and, oh my God, I want to work with you. Wow. So it was worth it. Amazing. And I, again, love writing. Beautiful. Uh, one word kept my attention is the femininity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So where you are in this femininity right now? Mm, great question. <laughs> so until last year, I was almost stuck in my male energy. What does that mean? A lot of people get confused when they hear male and female. So a better word or a better term of explaining it is yin and yang. This sign, a lot of people know it out of meditation or out oh, yeah. of, okay. uh, I don't know, inspirational posts or whatever. So it is a principle. It is an energy or it is an essence. Mm. So this is what we're talking about on a meta level. So... I did everything out of masculine energy, which means I was working, I was pushing, I was providing, I gave my best to lead, to have a purpose, to hustle and grind, to do, to compete, to show others, because that's what I knew and that's what I've learned and that's what I've been conditioned into or socialized into. And I'm not blaming anybody. I'm mm -hmm. just giving my best to observe yeah. how it is. And I'm taking full ownership and responsibility for who I am and how I was or how I am right now. And I realized last year that I was super angry and that I was exhausted and that I felt as if I was literally pushing up a huge rock up a mountain and I got so triggered when I saw any woman who was doing things out of ease and mm. grace and she would just do like that and the universe or other men would make things happen for her mm. whenever a woman cried I was like oh god why is she so emotional <laughs> and I realized I had so many judgments about women and I got triggered so hard, I realized, ooh, what does it mean to be a woman? What kind of woman do I want to be? Mm. What does true femininity mean? What, what is that? Besides, I mean, femininity, true womanhood. And I don't mean what my mother or my grandmother or my ancestors lived, bless them, thank you, but something outside of that. Mm. Not what I see on social media, not what I see on ads, not mm. what I see in Hollywood movies, not what I see in my everyday reality. What is true divine femininity and then also divine masculinity? And it took me down the rabbit hole and I was working with female embodiment coaches and I was working with shamans and now I even work with a relationship and intimacy coach because I realized, Butter, I had a list with all of the wrong beliefs about women and I at a certain stage in my life realized that the world is just a mirror. So everything that you get triggered by on the outside is what you have not accepted on the inside. This is beautiful. Something that is on the outside world, it's mm. like, Rrr! take that. Where is that in you that you don't accept it? So it's triggered you somehow. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So you think, oh, that person is showing off too much and they're wearing way too colorful clothes. What does that mean? Mm. I want to wear colorful clothes and I want to show off, but I don't allow myself. Wow, this is kind of jealousy, positive jealousy, not exactly. the bad side. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. because... 
a part of me knows that I can be like that person. Mm. So instead of saying, oh, they're stupid or they triggered me and running the other way, no, with open hands, with an open heart, walk towards it, cry, embrace it, allow the ego to die or this part of you, mm -hmm. the old part to die that didn't give you permission. And then wear these colorful clothes. It's okay. Mm. You're allowed to do that. It's just a story that you have. Mm. It doesn't allow you to do. So going back to femininity, I had to get rid and integrate so many parts about what true femininity is. For example, for me, receptivity, receiving is a very mm. feminine energy because the man provides and gives mm. and the woman receives. I mean, if you look at the biological body, it also makes sense, right? <laughs> if we think about how does the female body look like, how does the man, the male body look like? But for me, receptivity and passivity was something negative. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. it was connected to laziness. It was connected to not doing anything. Mm. And I literally, <laughs> I had to cry and shiver through, I am beautiful, I'm allowed to receive, I don't have to do. I was literally, it was so hard for me. It was mm. as if, Again, a part of me had to die before mm. I finally allowed that to crack open my heart. And I think it was Rumi who said something along the lines of your heart needs to be broken or break over and over and mm. over again until you finally crack it open. Mm. And that was the process last year. Amazing. What was the, um, because you said getting rid of something and integration. Mm -hmm. So what is the definition of, of integration for you? Mm -hmm. For me, integration is bringing something back. So let me start a few thoughts before mm. that. I do believe that the human psyche is very complex. Mm. We are so many different things. And I don't talk about roles. I don't talk about playing this role, being that role, whatever. No, we are many things. Mm. I mean, I'm a teacher, I'm a woman, I'm a daughter, I'm a comedian, I'm a public speaker, I'm a friend. And I am also somebody who's sad. I'm somebody who's angry. I'm somebody mm. who's happy. I'm somebody who's blissful. So one of my mentors said that she practices something called in a board meeting. So mm -hmm. she regularly has a meeting with parts of herself <laughs> that are in conflict. So this is what it's all about. So an integration session for me is bringing back a part that feels abandoned or doesn't feel welcome. So let's say uh, there is a sad part of me and all of these parts of me are having a party and they're living a good life mm -hmm. and they're like hey! but the sad part of Natalia let's call her Sandra the sad one mm -hmm. she's there's like oh, I'm so sad and when that happens you are losing energy because mm. that's the that's the logic of life, if I want to call it that way. If you don't embrace all parts of you, you're suppressing a part of you and mm. you're paying with life force energy. Mm. So if you do that long enough, you will end up depressed. Wow. So the wise and mature thing to do would be to say, Sandra, the sad one, come here. We love you too. And Sandra would be like, no, I don't want to. And maybe there's a part of you, the happy one said, no, I don't want, I'm happy. I don't want her. Mm. So an inner board meeting would be then bringing Sandra back and having her sit with the happy part of me mm. and finding a constructive discussion or a conversation. Again, I see it as a visualization or meditation exercise and seeing what can these two do to live in peaceful coexistence. Mm. And this way I have integrated Sandra. And this way I'm not leaking energy. And this way I have more energy. This way I can create more, inspire more. Mm. This way my immune system works better. This way I glow and radiate from the inside. Amazing. And did you make peace with Sandra before you integrated to your new version? Yes, yeah. I learned that sadness is totally okay. I was just very scared of feeling sadness and grief mm. because I had no reference point. Mm. I was so scared that that feeling is so terrifying that I'm going to die. 
because mm. it feels for me sadness and especially grief feels as if I'm falling into or in a black hole and it doesn't have an ending mm. so and you can't grab anything mm. there is nothingness so falling into that and allowing myself to to be in that state and I talked to therapists and shamans and whatever and they said you know, the longest time you can cry is anything between three and seven minutes. So you're going to come mm. out on the other side, which I knew intellectually, but I have not embodied or felt it. Mm. So coming through that is literally going through emotional hell. And what happens when we look, for example, at some biblical stories, what, what is hell? Hell is the is a metaphor mm. for being at your lowest low, for really vibrating here or here. Mm. But after that, we all know the metaphor of the phoenix who is rising from the ashes. So that's exactly what it's about. It's about burning in hell, mm. which I just see as a metaphor, to then raise again, reborn, which is again a metaphor, and which is about having more energy and being the pure you, because fire mm. also purifies. And when you're pure, you're open to receive, because the universe, God, Allah, can only talk to you when you're pure, when you're childlike, when you're open. God, Allah, the energy of this, of this big love, can't come to you, can't manifest itself through you when you are in war with yourself. Wow. I love that. I love it. So you invite people to make peace with themselves mm -hmm. at different level, mm -hmm. right? So take me again to the femininity part, mm -hmm. right? So from now your experience, your analysis, your journey. So what was the, the most trap that you were in apart from the masculine energy that you were in, and you, you discover that there is another way to stay a woman, independent woman, mm. working hard, providing, why not, and staying in your feminine energy at the same time. So what, what was the, you know, that shifts that you just adjust for yourself? Mm -hmm. Two things that you said where the wrong beliefs. Mm. So the first thing is I'm not independent. This is an illusion. This mm. is one of the biggest lies. We social, we human beings are social beings and we are interdependent with everything, with the <laughs> earth, with animals, with spirit, and definitely with <laughs> another human being if we chose to have a beautiful soul in our life with whom we are going on this journey of mm. being a human. So giving up my independence in quotation marks mm. or understanding that this is just a big lie that we have been really sold to mm. really be or uh, be an independent woman no be a interdependent woman no need to do everything on your own so mm. that was the first thing and the second thing is why work hard mm. work smart because as a woman again i receive and a real woman, a woman who is in her femininity, is in her wish, is, is in her wisdom, is mm. in her intuition, is guided by the earth and is channeling through above. And she knows, she doesn't think so much, she mm. is, she is home in her body, she is home in life. And she's not looking for love on the outside, she is love. And everything that she does comes through love. Mm. And when somebody attacks her, she opens her chest, her heart even more, and she brings people together. And it's not about competition. It's about understanding that we are all a community. We are a huge tribe, a global tribe, and we need to learn to understand on a deeper level that we are currently destroying mm. ourselves and each other and that there can be a peaceful way how to live together. Mm. And it's really about also forgiving other women and trusting other women again. I had mm. so much fear 
I was so terrible towards other women in the sense that I, since kindergarten butter, I had more mm. male friends. I always thought men are uncomplicated. When they say something, they do it. There is no da 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 da, mm. no gossip, no backstabbing. Until I have forgiven all of my kindergarten female friends who had hurt me and all of my female friends who had hurt me during my teenage years, I had to go and do a lot of forgiveness work wow. because I, at a certain stage, was hurt so much by other women. I mean, a small story, for example, I was uh, in the first grade and my best friend back then, she had this challenge that she wanted to do and I didn't agree with it. And she said, well, if you're not going to do that, she will be my best friend. And I said, well, good luck. And mm. I mean, now in my late 30s and until last year, I was carrying that pain with me. Whenever somebody mm. had her name, I was like, oh, screw her, go to hell. So I had to forgive her. I had to forgive myself. Mm. And since I did this work, the type of women in my life, the quality relationships that I have with other women are so different. Mm. The women now in my life, they are all queens. But they are not entitlement queens. Amazing. They are queens coming from the heart mm. who are queens and beautiful mothers, who are beautiful wives, who are really here to create a new earth and a next level of awareness and a society that mm. understands that we need to change. And I think this is what true femininity is about. Wow. I, I love that. Thank you. Oh, I Me love too. it. Yeah. I need to listen to the to the podcast for this part <laughs> to process more. Oh, I, yeah. loved it. I loved it. I loved <laughs> it. I loved it. So so forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So you were aware that you had some grudges mm -hmm. toward this kid, or it was a moment in your life where you said, mm, I'm I'm still having something I need to forgive. Mm -hmm. So you were keeping it with you mm -hmm. or you realize it afterwards? I just understood that any kind of resentment is something, it's a little bit like carrying a backpack with you of stones mm. and you're walking through life with this backpack full of stones and you're wondering, why can't I fly? Mm. And I think, don't ask me who it was, but it was a high spiritual teacher who said that anger is a little bit like drinking the poison and then hoping the other person to die. Wow. You're just hurting yourself. yourself yeah. So understand that this didn't happen against you. It happened for, for you. you. So I think it was Albert Einstein who, who supposedly once said something along the lines of one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your life is do you live in a friendly universe mm. or in a hostile universe? Mm. So I decided that I live in a friendly universe and everything in life happens for me because this is an opportunity to grow mm. and to level up and to let go of anything that is not pure, that is not mm. real, that is not truthful. So I realized that I was running around with that backpack and it can't be that I, again, at this age, am still angry or resentful towards a school kid. I mean, we were it's nine, crazy. right? Yeah. It is insane. That means I'm living in the past. Mm. I'm not living in the now. I'm acting out of something that happened almost 30 years ago. And that is the opposite of, of I mean, life just happens now. Mm. The only moment that exists is now. The past and the future are constructs of the mind. Mm. And when I'm pulled here, I can't be fully present. Mm. When I'm not fully present with you, I decode reality through my pain. Mm. So I will not act out of love towards you, but I will act through my wounding. Yeah. And then I will create even more drama and I will create pain in my life mm. and in your life. So I dragged you down and you then might go and let your anger or whatever off to somebody else. So as much as the positive ripple effect exists, a negative spiral also exists. Mm -hmm. And again, if we want world peace, then we're allowed to start with peace on the inside, as we said. And peace on the inside happens when we transform these negative vibrations or this resentment, anger, whatever, mm -hmm. integrate everything that is kind of lost or that we didn't feel and see how 
everything in your life changes. I mean, mm. literally, what kind of people you're going to attract, what kind of clients you're going to attract. You will get gifted with these small things. There are so many coincidences. Mm. I don't believe in coincidences okay. anymore. I really believe that your vibration, your energy speaks louder than words, and you don't receive what you want. You receive what you are. What you are, yeah. I believe in this. I don't believe in coincidences. Mm. Yeah. So this is forgiveness of others. What about forgiveness or forgiving ourselves? It's in the end, for me, it goes hand in hand. Goes hand, in hand. So when I work with one of my clients, what I do is very often when they feel, again, anger, hate, resentment, I ask them to write a letter towards that person mm -hmm. and write down everything that you always wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Don't be a good boy or a nice girl. No, just write down everything. But please don't send that letter. Don't mm -hmm. send it. And then when you feel, okay, the letter is ready and it can take a day or two days or three days, whatever, take that, stand in front of the mirror and read that letter and look yourself in the eyes. And that can be a very, very challenging thing, especially in the beginning. And you mm. don't need to finish it in one day. It's okay, take your time. And you're going to realize that this is a forgiveness process towards the other person. Mm. But at the same time, and when you're ready, at the end, I want you to say something like, let's say the person was called Max. Max, I forgive you. I thank you so much for everything that I've learned. I am ready to let that emotion go now. Mm. I set you free. Plus, Natalia, I forgive you. I know that you did your best based on the emotional maturity and the mm. tools that you had back then. Natalia, I forgive you. Natalia, I love you. Natalia, you're my best friend. And we're ready to let go. And when I can say that, then go into the desert or somewhere else, take that letter, burn, burn it, it down. So it's also a beautiful closing circle, a mini ritual. And you realize that there is an energy shift mm. and you don't need to believe in energy. Although there is enough science out there that proves it, mm. that this works. So give it a try. Amazing. This is what we call the um, emotional isolation, right? When you isolate your what you feel and you put them in the paper and then you burn them. Is a kind of isolation? I, I would call it actually integration. Integration. Okay. Because in the past you would not feel properly. So you mm. isolated the emotional or you isolated certain parts of yourself. And then isolation is again a wrong belief of the ego thinking, mm. oh, I'm so alone and not understanding that we are all a collective. We're all part of a mm. bigger soul or whatever. So feeling integrating, letting go. So from isolation to integration. Amazing. Amazing. I have a question for you. When was the moments when you lost really your confidence and then you did something and your confidence came up to the top and you said, I'm in the right way. When I lost my confidence, Again, I think that there are layers and this mm. happened in many different areas of my life. A moment that comes relatively quickly to mind was when I was at the high of my LinkedIn unicorn career and I was delivering an online, what was it, seminar, masterclass, mm for a big, big company and they had paid me a lot of money and I was grateful for this opportunity mm. and I was coaching these people or, or teaching them how to create content, how to present themselves, how to build a network and a part of me, while I was coaching or guiding them, went out of the whole experience, looked at it, looked at this whole scenario and said, nonsense that is just ridiculous no way. and you know what what i can say one thing and i can burn everything down wow and i panicked or another part of me because i was teaching another part was observing and the part that was teaching was literally thinking come back and please don't burn it down <laughs> so it came down and i was teaching but i was so insecure 
Mm. And I was so confused. I was so low on energy. I literally felt as if somebody, as if I wanted to go to sleep because I started to doubt what I'm doing and if what I'm doing is all right. And I was, I was questioning if everything I've built over the last 80 years was real. And if it really helps people in the most profound way so I could help people. Mm. And the immediate answer was, no, it's a joke. I'm selling jokes. Uh, yeah, it's important for egos mm. and it's important for 3D reality, but I'm here to help people reconnect with their inner truths, with their soul, with their wisdom, with their intuition. And then I thought, oh gosh, I have no clue how to teach that. I have no clue because I even don't know that. Mm. So then I went on the sabbatical and during the sabbatical, I again had my anxiety attacks, I had my doubts, I had my fears, I had my insecurities. And yeah, I mean, it took me nine months to come back and realize, okay, yeah, now I'm good again. Okay. But nine months, well, isn't that as long as it takes to give birth to a new child? So maybe it was about rebirthing myself. Yes, exactly. And I think everyone's Simon is different, right? Exactly. Some people, they need nine months. Some people, they need years. It's, it's, I think it's, uh, it's case by case. Yeah. And we are all different, right? Exactly. Maybe, and, yeah. yeah. Maybe you were prepared somehow. You needed just to process, to integrate. I love this word, by the way. And then you come up uh, with, the, with the new version, which is, uh, which is really amazing. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you. You just came from Bali. Mm -hmm. Take me through Bali. Bali. So <laughs> last year I stumbled, actually it was a little bit earlier, of a gentleman called David Dada. Mm -hmm. And he is a, he has, he wears many hats, but one of the hats that he wears is also being a relationship and intimacy coach. And he supposedly is the gentleman or the person who talked or who not invented but who brought into awareness the topic of polarity about mm. yin and yang and femininity and masculinity so in one of his books that i just read last year he said that cities have male energy mm. cities about uh, cities are about career and mm. do 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 and go 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 and achieve while uh, how do you call it, islands, are feminine energy. So it's more about going with the flow and relaxing okay. and being in the beach and receiving and a little bit of chaos and no rules. And when I landed in Bali last year, I was terrified. I was not feeling safe. Oh. I had many breakdowns because I realized the infrastructure, the way how things work there was so far away mm. from everything that I had in Dubai, because I had been in Dubai for 14 years and I liked that everything is, you know, one button and yeah. it's there and it's comfort <laughs> and it's uncomplicated. And I knew how to navigate through, again, the, if I want to call it, male way of doing business, mm. the male way of living. But then Bali was a little bit like an invisible therapist or teacher mm. who basically tilted her head and said, oh, so you think you integrated everything. So you think you healed? Mm, let's Maybe test not. you. <laughs> and it, I realized that obviously I was ready because mm. if I wasn't, this opportunity wouldn't present itself. Mm. So I leaned forward with all of my fear and I still had more than a handful of wrong beliefs or inner wounds about safety and my connectedness that I was allowed to accept integrate and everything mm. around that so yeah mm. I have been in Bali in June mm -hmm. and I can share with you uh, one experience it's a chaos right as you said infrastructure but it was organized chaos somehow. I mm -hmm. was there for eight, nine days and they didn't see one accident in the road. And they had one taxi driver and he was all the time smiling, you know, from the airport to the, uh, to the hotel. And I start to be a bit nervous because we were not going fast, traffic. I feel something, right? And he was smiling. I, I told him, why you are so quite calm, you know? 
He said, yeah. And he answered me with a smile. He mm. said, you know what? It's a chaos. But in other places, people, they don't have cars. They don't have motorcycle. They don't have this. We are grateful. He said, oh my God, gratitude. Mm. I told him, tell me more about gratitude. Mm. He said, you know, sir, we have four temples, right? One in the, in the house, one in the village, one in the forest, and one for the ocean. Okay, nice. So what is it about? He told me the first one, they are grateful for having a family, for having a roof, for having food. And then the second one is the temple for the villages. They, uh, they, uh, they gather, right, all the people from the same village, and they pray together. They are into gratitude because this sense of affiliation, right? If someone lose his job or something happened to them, there is the neighbor who is helping them, right? And then the, the third one, which is the forest. I said, okay, why the forest? He said, because sometimes people, they went into the forest and they couldn't come back. Maybe because they, they were attacked by animal or maybe they lose the, the path. I said, okay, makes sense. What about the ocean? He said, people, they go for fishing. And maybe for some weather condition, they could not come back. Natalia, he, he gave me a, a lesson of my life in 15 minutes. Mm. Now I'm 43 and he gave to me this in 15 minutes. I, now I understand why. And then when I came back to Dubai, I, I was always into gratitude, right? From the moment I wake up in the morning till when I sleep. But I didn't have this deep meaning of gratitude that when you wake up in the morning, you have a roof, you can see, you are healthy, you have a car, you have food. Don't take things for granted. And that was a light bubble moment, you know. So this is my experience for, uh, for Bali as well. Absolutely. I feel you. The mindset that people have over there is stunning. It's literally mm. next level. And when you spend a little bit of time in Bali, then I actually realized how entitled I was mm -hmm. in the sense that I took things for granted mm -hmm. in the sense of, oh yeah, of course we have electricity, of course we have internet, of course mm -hmm. we have water, of course I can go into a supermarket and get anything. Mm -hmm. And when, in quotes, all of that is taken away from you, mm -hmm. then you realize, oh, so if anybody out there says oh gratitude i don't know what to be grateful for mm. let's start at the things that we just discussed yeah from really the basics exactly. right exactly i made my research and i noticed that you made a deal with the universe mm -hmm. what was it oh there's so many <laughs> deals so so many deals one of the deals is that i can learn and grow through everything at the answer for the mm. thing that I'm looking for is always, always, always ahead of me. Mm. I just need to look clearly. Mm. So I believe that the matrix in the movie, mm -hmm. in one or the other way, was more than a movie. Some people mm. say oh, it was a documentary. Because we, everybody on this planet, looks at reality, looks at life through a set of their own filters yeah. through their experiences through their education through their socialization and whatever which means we decode what we see mm. based on what was there and then we project what could be and because of these filters i do believe that we have as many perceptions of reality mm. out there as there are human beings and sometimes when we are not present when we are not mindful when we're stuck in the mind then we can't see what is really in front of us. So when we ask for advice, when we ask for a sign, really reconnect, ground yourself to the earth, open yourself up to the universe, open your eyes, and I can almost guarantee you that you're going to see the answer. Mm. And it takes time, it's a journey getting there. How the answers can, how we can decode the answer somehow? Mm. So, for example, now we're, I mean, it really depends on what the question is. So let's say you ask me something about mindset mm -hmm. right now. And I would think, okay, mindset, what story can I tell about mindset? I would look at you, I would look left and right, it's like, oh, 
there is a wolf. Ah, there's a wolf. Wolf, 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 wolf. Oh, there's the story about the wolves. Mm. Do you remember? Mm. So there's a story about the white wolf and a black wolf. Mm. And the black wolf is the negative one, the oh, poor me. And their white one is all about, let's say, inspiration and mm. listening to the universe. So which wolf is going to win? The one that you feed most, which mm. is the white wolf. Funny enough, the wolf at the wall is white. Amazing. Yeah. It's that simple. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So I have a question for you. What is the legacy that you want to build in this life? I've been thinking about that for a very long time. And then I realized, screw legacy. Ooh. No, this is a male way of looking at the world. Okay. Which is okay. I am here. Or let me put it in another way. I worked with a lot of shamans, mediums. I tapped into, let's say, tools like human design and gene keys and astrology, which is a lot about soul paths. Mm. So it is based on the belief that we're going through or we have a soul map and it's a little bit about the soul's journey. So what is the soul here to learn? Mm. And apparently in this round, my life's purpose, or no, not the purpose, why I'm here is to become holy. Hmm. And when I heard that the first time, I fell backwards out of the chair. Okay. And I said, what does that even mean? So I studied the origins of the word holy. Hmm. And holy and healthy and holy and whole is the same. And then this is all just about integrating. Mm. So I am really here to learn to love and accept all of my parts, to forgive myself for everything that I've done and not done, mm. to be and vibrate on the highest level of love, blissfulness, togetherness, oneness, to inspire other people, mm. to be super creative, and to help other people to become that as well. Mm. So my life's work is really about becoming the truest person that I can be, as getting rid as, of as many masks as possible, so that at the end, the purest, most childlike, mm. most inspiring Natalia ends or results out of it. Mm. This is the pathway to meet your authentic self, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. The truest, most authentic, mm -hmm. most real, most connected version mm -hmm. of this human Natalia. Who is your role model in this life? The universe. Why? Because it's pure love. And whenever I don't know what to do, I ask myself the question, what would the universe do? Mm. And this is such a reality check. So what would, what would the universe do? Or I also ask myself, is it true? I'm a huge fan of Jordan, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. And he once said something along the lines of that love is one of the highest virtues and truth is, I think he said something like the handmaiden mm. of of love. So we have love as the highest value and we have truth that is serving love. Mm. So whenever I'm in a difficult situation, I don't know what to do. I ask, is it really true? No. Okay. What would love do? Or what would the universe do? Mm. Or what would God do? And then it's about having the guts and being honest enough and having, building up all of the courage that I have and do it. And it can be an apology. It could be asking for forgiveness. It can be saying, sorry, I was wrong. It could be saying, gosh, that was such a manipulative little piece of... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and forgive me, because I'm human. I was jealous. Mm. I was vibrating low. I, I don't know, my inner punisher was coming up and mm. I thought, I have to punish you because I thought I'm... Mm. I don't know what better than you or because I have to teach you a lesson. This mm. is all shadow. This is all ego. That wasn't my real self. So I forgave myself and I'm asking you kindly, mm. could you please forgive me as mm. well? Because I don't want to walk around with this burden and with this terrible energy. Wow. Ah, la la. 
let's say we will meet in three years from now, mm -hmm. 2026. Mm -hmm. And you will tell me, brother, this last three years were just amazing. And this is what happened in these three years. What would be? What happened in these three years? I became even healthier. Hmm. I became even more aligned, more integrated. I helped so many people. I guided so many people in becoming a little bit more authentic. I was singing a lot, I was dancing a lot, I was traveling a lot, man, I was cooking, I was baking, I was creating incredible content, I was meeting people from all around the world. Together, we worked on projects, on initiatives, on things, on campaigns to bring more and more people back into their heart, mm. to get them out of the mind, into their body, into the now. And we created a ripple effect. Mm. And through that, we shifted the energy, the awareness mm. of so many individuals around us. And it felt as if the world was a little bit more peaceful. Mm. And we had so much fun. We, again, were singing, dancing, laughing. Wow. And all of this just in three years. This is really beautiful. Give me one question to my next guest. One question to your next guest. If you could ask the universe any question, hmm. what would it be? Okay. Thank you so much. It was really, really, really amazing. That was really inspiring. A lot of insights. Uh, I will watch the episode carefully. I need to process something over there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for those incredible questions. Thank you. Thank you for truly listening. Thank you for being present. And thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much.